Well, thanks for joining us today. I'm Jerry Shaw. I'm the program supervisor with the Department of Wildlife. Joining me today, we've got Dallas Barber, who's our big game biologist in charge of the big game species here in Oklahoma. We're going to be discussing a little bit about chronic wasting disease, or CWD, uh, its history in Oklahoma, and how we're managing the disease going forward. So Dallas, just to start us, can you tell us what CWD really is? Yeah, so CWD is basically just chronic wasting disease. Um, this is a, a family of diseases from the TSE family, uh, transmissible spongiform encephalopathy. So th that basically means that it can uh, transfer from animal to animal. Mm -hmm. uh, causing holes is where spongiform, uh, what that means, right. and then encephalopathy means of the brain. So essentially, uh, those deer just stop acting like deer. Um, we're starting to get some symptoms of emaciation. Mm -hmm. um, it's really concentrating itself in that brain tissue, so losing function of, of just normal bodily function. So when you say it transfers to animal to animal, is there danger of it transferring from deer to say cattle yeah. or deer to yeah. household pets? So chronic wasting disease only impacts those in the cervid family. So that's going to be, uh, you know, deer, elk, moose, caribou. So there's not really a concern for it transferring to cattle, pronghorn, you know, anything that's not in that cervid family. So, so here in Oklahoma, we're talking about our white-tailed deer, our mule deer, and our elk are all susceptible. Yes. Wow. So a little bit about the, the history. This isn't this isn't new to our state, no. is it? So um, it is new to, to our wild deer and elk herds, but uh, we've actually had chronic wasting disease in our state before. Um, the first being back in 1999, uh, we had a case uh, up in the Oklahoma County area uh, that was a, a high fence elk facility. Mm -hmm. And then again in 2019, we had the same story just in Lincoln County. So not our not our first time kind of dealing with this disease of, you know, from, from a 30,000 foot view, but it is definitely the first time we've had to deal with it in our wild deer and elk. So I, I remember a couple years ago we had uh, a positive in the in the Panhammer region, mm -hmm. but that deer wasn't actually from Oklahoma, yeah. was it? So that first one that people probably heard about uh, up in Cimarron County was straight south of Boise City, um, but it was actually from an out-of-state deer. It was from a deer in Texas, um, but it was two and a half miles just south of our state border, which uh, according to our response plan, we treat that as an in-state positive, just with the proximity to our state border. So we set up a selected surveillance area there um, where people could, could voluntarily test their deer uh, you know, within that SSA. So I, you, you mentioned a response plan. I, I do know that in, in Oklahoma, we kind of have a partnership with our yeah. Department of Agriculture. Yeah. How, how does that fit together in a, in a response plan? Yeah, so uh, we're kind of a unique state where the Wildlife Department uh, is, you know, the jurisdiction over our wild deer and mm -hmm. elk herds and our Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food and Forestry, or ODAF, um, they have jurisdiction over captive facilities. So in partnership with them, we developed a CWD response plan uh, that was passed back in 2019. So that's kind of our, our guiding document for all things CWD, regardless of where we find it. You, you mentioned something called an SSA mm -hmm. just, a, just a, a minute ago. What, what does that, what is yeah. an SSA and how does it, how does it play in the CWD realm? Yeah, so an SSA is a selected surveillance area. So according to our plan, when we have an index case or a first mm -hmm. seen or known case in an area, we establish a, a selected surveillance area. And we try to use that within about a 10 mile radius of where that animal was found, be it a hunter harvested animal, uh, a sick animal, you know, however we find that, that first one in an area, um, we set up about a 10 mile radius um, trying to use commonly understood borders. So highways, uh, rivers, county lines, things like that that are very defined to where we can easily describe those to, to folks to use. Um, what comes with an SSA are just a couple more regulations as far as uh, how you can transport deer out of that SSA. So um, on our website, wildlifedepartment.com, it's one of the first things you'll see on our homepage is some information pertaining to that as far as how you can bring deer out of that area. So. You know, a lot of people are asking, well, why are we, why are we doing this? Right. Um, essentially, those CWD prions, they harbor themselves in the central nervous system, so the brain and the spinal column. So you'll notice a lot of those regulations pertain to leaving the head and the spinal column within that SSA. That way we are not assisting in moving those, those uh, prions about the state. 
So I know that we've got uh, a currently established SSA that was in Cimarron County mm -hmm. from that Texas positive. Yes. Since then, we've had a couple of deer tested in our yeah. state. Yeah. So, you know, over the summer, we had two uh, sick deer calls, which, you know, this is something that I field on a, a fairly regular basis, people that have a sick deer that they're concerned about. Um, when those deer check a couple boxes, um, being, you know, emaciation or loss of fear of humans, things like that, those are deer that, that we like to get our hands on and have them tested for or chronic wasting disease. So following those same protocols, um, we had a deer that, that came back from Texas County. So we are talking a lot about Texas. This is right. Texas County, not the state of Texas, but Texas County, um, a little bit east and, and north of Guinan, um, that one tested positive for chronic wasting disease. So there's been a newly established SSA there. Um, it includes, you know, the town of Hooker, the town of Hardesty, um, and then another one not too long after that uh, in Woodward County. So this is about, uh, would have been six miles east of Moreland and then just a little way south of the 412 Highway. So we have another established SSA there in Woodward County. So what, what are the regulations, basically? What, what are the materials that, that we need to leave behind yeah. in those areas? So those regulations, it says that you can bring out, you know, front and rear quarters, you can bring out tenderloins, scrap meat, uh, back straps, you know, all of your, your normal cuts that you would bring out of the field, you can bring that. It's just really important to leave that spinal column uh, along with, with the head. Now you are probably asking, well, what am I supposed to do with my head? Um, there's a couple different ways you can bring those out. You can either bring that head out whole but you have to remove all tissue from it. So again, we're trying to mitigate the spread of those prions. So a lot of those harbor themselves in the brain. So okay. all things tissue. Now, what is tissue? Tissue is anything that's not bone. So if you have a way to you know, skin that head out and boil it on site, there's some taxidermists that are available within that SSA that you could probably get a hold of to have them do that for you. Or you could just skull cap that right. animal and bring it out that way. So, so as a hunter, if I happen to be hunting inside one of these mm -hmm. relatively 10-mile SSAs, I harvest a deer as long as I quarter that meat out mm -hmm. and leave the spinal column and the head, or if I bring that head out, it's just the skull cap, not the, not the entire head, or if I clean the head, I, I can still bring all that out. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as, a, as a hunter, should I be concerned about the rest of the deer in the state is is this something that i need to be looking for you know if i hunt in the south part of the state or, or over on the eastern border well i mean we do have cases of chronic wasting disease in every state that surrounds us so i think the most important message to give to our hunters is just to stay diligent as long as you're diligent and are making you know if you see a deer that's acting a little weird give us a call i mean if it checks some of those boxes that we talked about earlier it's something that warrants testing it, it seems like with this plan in place and the SSAs that that we've kind of expected this for some time. Yeah. That, you know, we started working on this years ago. Mm -hmm. Why why is it that, that we as a state needed to be concerned? That, is it just our state that's in fact infected? You talked about Texas mm -hmm. having a Texas positive. What about the states around us? Are yeah. They so, you know, this is kind of a deal where we're lucky to not have to be the first ones that are kind of treading this path. Um, there are multiple states across the United States that are, are dealing with this. I think we're up to 30 now, if I recall right, with a handful of Canadian provinces as well. Um, so, you know, it's not necessarily learning what they did, but more importantly, what not to do. Right. Um, I think that really helped us develop this plan, you know, calling, talking to a lot of my colleagues um, as far as what worked for them and what didn't. Um, and we kind of took a lot of those ideas and put them all into our own to, to make our own response plan that works best for, for our hunters in our state. So I, I looked through the response plan, had a hand in, in writing part of it, and and it seems to me, Dallas, that, that we're trying to do the, the best we can, but not negatively impacting yeah. either our hunters or our resource. Yeah. That, that we're not necessarily worried about managing the disease, mm -hmm. but we're worried about manage, managing a deer herd through this disease. Mm -hmm. So I, I appreciate you know, the, the diligence that we're doing. I appreciate areas where people can get some more knowledge. Yeah. And I know that, that our c &E group has really done quite a, quite a bit of work trying to get information out. Yeah. If I were a hunter wanting more information about 
CWD, maybe the SSA specifically, yep. uh, just anything related to this to this topic. Where yeah. should I turn? So the first place I'd go is just to our department website, wildlifedepartment.com. Um, you can get to that SSA or CWD page a couple of different ways. There's a, a tile right on the home page that has, you know, learn more here. That's where I'd start. If you can't find it that way, there's a little search bar up in the top right. You can just search CWD or SSA. That'll take you right to it. Um, another third party website is cwd-info.org um, and that's really just a, a very science-based website that's been put together uh, by multiple people across the country that's just updating everybody on you know the the newest things in CWD what other states are doing where it's at what regulations all of those states have so even if you're a, a hunter in Oklahoma that is traveling to another state to hunt you know some of their uh, regulations in those states might be different than ours so just something to, to to educate yourself on there. You know, you, you brought up hunting in other states. This carcass movement restriction from mm -hmm. inside that impacted or the infected zone, that's yeah. not something unique to Oklahoma, no. is it? That's kind of the standard? Yeah, I mean, that's that's going to be what we call a, a BMP or a best management practice. Um, that's something that has been put in place by almost every single state that has chronic wasting disease. Again, it's not because we know that this isn't going to spread. It's going to spread. Right. But what we have to do is we have to try to mitigate that as much as humanly possible. So obviously a deer is not going to know that it's crossing an SSA line or not, but hunters sure do. Um, so artificially spreading that disease to places where it hadn't already been established is what we're trying to prevent. That makes a lot of sense. So Dallas, if, if I'm hunting inside that SSA, besides making sure that I abide by the carcass restriction. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I can do as a hunter that would help the department understand yeah. the disease a little bit? So more? in those SSAs, we have a voluntary test freezers. So if you want to have your deer tested, or if you want to help us kind of establish a, a data set for what's going on within that SSA, there are a couple different locations within each of those SSAs to voluntarily donate your deer head. So in Cimarron County, you've got one at uh, Moore's Food Pride there in Boise City. Um, in Texas County, you're going to have one at Hardesty at the Pack a Snack store there. Uh, and then in Hooker, you'll have one at their like fire and EMS building. So those are your two options in those two counties. Woodward County, you've got an option at our Northwest Regional Office. It's there kind of on the east side of the town of Woodward. And then you've got an option there uh, in Moreland at their fire department. So kind of spread out across both of those SSAs that way, uh, no matter what direction you're going hopefully you'll pass by one. And is there a charge associated no, with that? It's completely free. I mean, the department will pay for your test. Uh, really, the only thing that you have to do is just voluntarily give that head to that freezer, um, and it'll it'll be tested uh, hopefully within a, a reasonable amount of time. Just, just as a question, what is a reasonable amount of time yeah. for a test? So that's that's kind of where we realize there's a bottleneck. You know, you put the, fr the head in the freezer, we're going to try to run those freezers weekly during those peak seasons, bi-weekly at, at other times. Um, but once we pull those samples, we send them to Colorado State University for testing. Um, the problem is there's only a handful of accredited labs across the country that are certified to perform this test. Um, and those, area, or those labs are receiving tests from multiple other states. So I've seen them turn those around in a week or two. I've seen them turn around, you know, as, as much as two months. So that's kind of where the bottleneck is. We understand it's inconvenient, but it is something that we're, we're having to, to deal with. So long-term prognosis, if, if we don't slow the spread of this disease mm -hmm. down, what kind of impact can this have across the state for our hunters and our, yeah. and our wildlife community? So long term, this disease has shown uh, the capability for uh, population reduction. Um, states that have had this that are seeing that, uh, Wyoming would be a great example. You know, they're seeing once you get prevalence rates up into that 30% range, they're starting to see population decline. Um, you know, other concerns that people have um, is the meat quality. I mean, does this impact me? Can I get CWD? Um, all the science says it's not possible. Um, but on the other hand, you know, the CDC is recommending that anyone that harvests a deer from an area that is known to have CWD to have their deer tested before consuming. So that's another reason why we have some of those voluntary uh, testing sites for people that are concerned. So having, having heard that, that the progression could be, you know, sped up by humans moving mm -hmm. the, the prions around, you know, it, it makes sense that we have these SSAs and it makes sense that, that we kind of try to limit the artificial or non-animal movement mm -hmm. of, of these prions out and around. 
So Dallas, we talked about the, the website. Is there anything that our hunters should be looking for? And, and, and what is the threshold for, say, giving you a phone call or sending you an email? What, what, do, you, what do you need our hunters to help us with? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there. It, I don't think there's anything that that's too sensitive to to ask us. I mean, that's what we're here for is to help our constituents and and help our hunters. Um, if you see a deer that's extremely emaciated, if you see a deer that's not acting like a deer, meaning that you know you can walk right up to it and it just stands there and looks at you. If you see a deer that's spinning around in circles, that's mm -hmm. another thing we can look at. Now, keep in mind that when when you see that kind of stuff, there's a ton of other ailments that deer can have that have those exact same symptoms so when you describe what that to you know myself or one of our field staff and they tell you oh it you know it's something else don't be offended by that I mean this is something that we've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times and we've gotten pretty good at a at you know kind of delegating what warrants a test and what doesn't so is there any way I can tell when I'm out hunting if I'm looking at a deer in my scope and it's and it's not emaciated, mm -hmm. is there any way that I could tell just by looking at it that it that it has this disease? So that's the hardest part about this disease, in my my opinion. Um, that incubation period that that this disease has um, can be anywhere from six to eighteen months, meaning that you know they have this disease, they're infected with this disease, but they look perfectly fine. Um, it's only until the later stages of that disease that they're showing these outward symptoms of having it. So, you know, like you were said, you, you can be out looking at your, your deer on a field and they all seem perfectly fine, but there's a, a chance that one of those deer could be positive for chronic wasting disease. So unfortunately, until they're in that late stage of that disease, there's not really a way to tell if they're positive or not. So Dallas, it seems like just in this short conversation we've had that, that Oklahoma is really doing everything possible yeah. without impacting our hunters to a negative degree. Mm -hmm. um, but really it, it relies on the hunting public to help us out without the artificial movement of these yeah. prions outside of the, the SSAs. Yeah, and I mean, th this is not, it's it's not something that we haven't asked our hunters to do before. You know, we've asked them to, to up antlerless harvest, they up antlerless harvest. So um, this is a, just a, another example of using our our hunters as managers on, on in the field. So again, we're managing the deer herd, we're not managing the disease. Um, so I mean, some of those things they can do, be diligent, in, in observing your, your deer and your deer herd at home. There's nobody that knows your deer better than you do, right? Um, and then, you know, having your deer tested. As soon as we can establish where this disease at, is at and then, you know, how, where it's at and prevalence rates for that disease, that can aid us in management decisions down the road. So the, the take home message, Dallas, if you want to leave anything as we close out, what what would you share with our hunters for this disease? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the most important thing is that our hunters are, are who we depend on to, to implement these management recommendations. So, you know, follow the rules for that SSA because this is something where it's, these aren't our resource, it's just our turn with them. And, you know, this is something that can impact what your kids get to do as far as hunting goes, what your grandkids get to experience when it comes to deer hunting. So being diligent in, you know, following those SSA rules and regulations and then volunteering your deer for testing. You know, there's not much that we can figure out if we don't have the opportunity to, to test those deer to figure out some of those metrics. Well, that's all great information, Dallas. I, I really appreciate you mm -hmm. taking the time to come and kind of maybe clear up some of those questions that we might have. Yeah. And again, th this is a, a, an ever-changing front. You mm -hmm. know, the best place to get most up-to-date information you told us was on our website, yeah. uh, our homepage. There's also some other resources that you could follow there. And just hunters, just do what we can to, to help protect this resource. Know where these SSAs are. Know what the rules are for bringing parts out of the SSA. If you hunt out of state, know what the rules are for bringing carcass parts back into the state because we have restrictions on, on those as well. But I thank you for your time today. And again, if you have any questions, check us out on our webpage, wildlifedepartment.com. Thank you.